Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Scorpio. Scorpio is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign. Then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And here we go. Let's check out these tea leaves, see what they have to say today. Oh, Scorpio, Scorpio. And so our card for today is the Seven of Swords, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I just, um, this has to do with futility. I always am like, ugh, oh, this card when I pull it. And that's why I'm laughing. I'm just <laughs> gosh dang it. I like the I like the colors of the card. I don't necessarily like the energy of it. Okay, so let's see. What do we have going on here? So this is an interesting, I always love when um, we have a formation that's kind of um, echoed. So we have uh, an animal being ridden by somebody. Maybe this one almost looks like they're standing on the back of it. The head, this is the head, the legs, and then we have the person standing here. Their arm is raised up. Their head looks like it's looking up. Now we turn this right here and we have again an animal. This one has uh, horns. Okay, but we also have somebody who is kind of leaning back on this this, uh, well, I would say it's like a bowl maybe and, um, looking upward with their arm raised. Okay. Um, so interesting when they aren't exactly the same, but they are kind of echoed there. So let's look at the first one. Uh, it also looks like maybe a Buffalo or a bowl of some kind. Um, you can see it's kind of got that real, um, like the, the big thick <laughs> um, front of it right there, the big chest and back and um, maybe the smaller um, backside with the smaller legs. So that makes me think this is like a cow, a bull, okay? Um, maybe like a water buffalo, I don't know. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's a large beast. Um, it is something very substantial. Okay, a lot of force here. Um, and uh, with the person standing on the back of it, looking up to the sky, pointing maybe or reaching out, um, we have some formations here. Uh, and immediately I think this is all about chasing your dreams. Um, you know, in the face of uh, things really just not working out right now. Kind of feeling like, you know, I don't know. Do you ever feel like that where it's like everybody's been lying to you about life or, you know, they, <laughs> your whole life growing up, whatever people have been telling you, um, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, there's somebody out there for you. There's, you know, there's, you're going to have a big payoff for all of your hard work and, you know, all these kinds of things, the dreams, right? And, um, maybe they haven't always worked out or maybe they've never happened. It just has not happened the way that you hoped or envisioned it would. And so you feel like the universe is kind of playing um, a mean trick on you. Like everything is maybe kind of a lie, um, feeling a little disenfranchised, disheartened. Um, and yet, and yet there's something inside of you. There's some part of you that's still you know, maybe you're a romantic, but there's something inside of you that still dreams um, about that great unknown, about those um, mysterious, beautiful, divine things. 
that maybe the world will, um, you know, show you some kindness, some love, some opportunity, you know, and, um, I think we all feel like this sometimes. I think we all feel like we've been let down, but if we could just hang on, right? If we can just keep pushing through, um, you know, and I think that's, I think it's very important to keep that energy, um, as much as you can. And I know sometimes life just really, um, does get to those places where it's like, I don't even know how I'm gonna, um, feed my family, let alone myself for the next few weeks, you know, um, I don't know, you know, if I'm going to have a job after this next season, or I don't know, you know, all these what ifs, or how will I, you know, and that happens. I mean, that really does happen in life. A lot of us are living from paycheck to paycheck, you know, terrified, you know, the world is full of things that are scary, but what is more scary than our life being, you know, hanging from a thread? And it is for so many people. And I get that. I understand that. And I feel like sometimes, you know, my readings, because I do focus a lot on self-work and, and spirituality and, you know, whatever, some, some things that are more frivolous and, um, I feel like maybe I, maybe sometimes my readings are a little callous, you know, as far as, um, real, real issues, health issues, family dynamic issues, uh, financial issues, you know, and I'm no stranger to any of these things. So, um, you know, but I also want you to know, um, I do think about this stuff and I do want to talk about it in my readings. I try to as much as I can. Um, but I also, I don't, I don't want to be a place where it's just more, um, pile on for some, you know, some people are really suffering and we need a little bit of love and hope. And, um, you know, that's why I do, I do talk about the self work and I'm not going to say it's the only thing, or it's going to be the thing that's going to fix your life because I understand that it, it's not, it's a privilege to be able to spend time thinking about, um, our mental health, our psyche, our, our relationship, um, with God, because that's hard when you don't know, uh, where you're going to find food, you know, for the next few days. Right. Um, you know, and I hope that's not where we're at here today, Scorpio, but, uh, you know, what I do know is that you've had some blows, okay? Things have been harder than normal, especially emotionally. And you feel lied to. You feel like you've gotten the short stick. And, um, and yet, because you are a beautiful soul, you are an en uh, enduring being you fight through it and you still let yourself dream and i really i see that i see that in the physical world here i see that in this emotional and um metaphysical zone is as well okay um you are continuing to do whatever you can to get things moving in the right direction. Okay. And I know it's hard. It's hard and it's hard not to get cynical. It's hard not to, uh, lose your temper. It's hard not to blame everything else. Um, you know, and really stew in that ruminate. Well, hello, you're just going to knock my stuff over, mister. Come on. You want to come on my lap? Thank you. Come on, all the way down. Go on now. Go find your bed. Go on. Go find it. There you go. He's got a nice little fluffy pillow over or pillow blanket over there for him. Okay, so um, 
you know, I know you're working hard to, to get to this next place where it's going to, you know, work out. At least find that ease. You're not just sitting by and letting things, you know, go. I know that. Um, and now I want to look at... I want to look at this one because it does. It looks like um, quite a beast there. And we have the the horns and we have kind of a tail and, you know. And I and to me, I really, what this, what this really brings up is there is a sense of, I mean, there's that great anger. It is there. No, not again. You just went to the bed. Please. Honey, come on, you keep pulling down my my tablecloth. I love you, and I will cuddle with you in just a while, but you've got to go. You must go. Okay, so I think that, the, you know, there is the anger. There is the anger. Um, you know, and I and I understand that. But you can't let it consume you. And that's the big thing. Don't let it consume you. Um, you know, and I think with, with that Seven of Swords, there really is that um, energy of secrets and secret things and falling into, um, you know, our hidden lives. And we all do. We all have hidden lives. We all have our um, things that we don't show other people. We have secret lives, especially like co for coping, right? And I know this all too well. If you've watched my readings at all, um, or if you're new, welcome. But, um, you know, I'm in recovery for substance abuse. And of course, so many secrets in that kind of life. Um, and exactly where I would go if anything ever got hard. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I am no stranger to having a secret life or, you know, a place where um, I don't want anybody to see what I'm doing. And now, you know, um, although I'm, I don't, I would say I don't really hide anything anymore, but, um, you know, there's things, of course, that I am, I feel shameful about, you know, I'm, I'm still an addict and I still, things like, um, you know, overeating, you know, or, um, emotional eating as we like to say it <laughs> in a, in a nice way. Um, you know, and these things are, uh, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Um, and you know, but you, you have to be mindful and not get lost in it. So I understand um, during these times, you maybe fall into some of those secret places um, where your ability to cope kind of, um, you know, where that's, where that hides, you know, where you go to hide in that, I guess, you know, and maybe that is just you, you pull yourself away from people. Um, you stop going out as much. You don't talk to people as much, whatever it is. Um, you know, it could be so many things, but just check in with yourself, you know, please make sure that you are, um, <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, I'm laughing. The cat is just trying any old way to like sneak back up here. Um, but checking in with yourself, right? Making sure that if you have support people, um, if you have people you trust, talking to them, it really, you know, and that's what keeps, I mean, that's my thing. Keeping myself in check by just saying it. And it's hard. But you know what's even harder is carrying around secrets. Carrying around um, that shame, that guilt. And you know what? Um, it just adds to the, the pain of the things that are out of your control. The things that hurt. The things that you're trying to get through. And then on top of it, you're adding these other things. 
um, you know, and, and we should all be able to do what we want, even if it's not, you know, you're an adult. Hopefully you're an adult watching this, you know, this is not for, for kids or maybe anybody under like 25, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, uh, you're not, you should be able to do whatever you want. Of course. Um, no judgments for me, but, um, I don't want you to get lost in it and it's so easy. So keeping yourself accountable where you can just saying what it is, having one person to check in with, you know, even just that will be helpful. It's amazing what just saying it can do you know and I understand there's circumstances where we can't divulge things about ourselves you know um to everybody and it doesn't have to be you should you should have a private life you should have privacy but um you know finding a place where it is anonymous or you know therapy counseling whatever um so it's legally you legally they can't say anything to anybody okay um, now I want to look at this. We have a peach. Okay. Um, and we have a, we have a not happy, not a very happy face. Okay. But seeing that peach gives me hope, <laughs> gives me big hope. Um, maybe still going through it a bit, but I think that we're going to get to that place where we're, you know, there's a sweetness to life once more. It's not going to take forever. You always bounce back. I know you do. Scorpio, you are resilient people. <laughs> Very, okay? Um, and I know it's going to come right back around to, um, you know, something uh, extremely pleasing life back into a place of ease and content. It's just taking a lot of work and I know, and I know, and a lot of patience and a lot of just hanging on, I know. Um, but I also see a person meditating. I see we have an illuminating candle. And so, you know, as I, um, often do, I like to mention, uh, you know, something that maybe you can, think about or try, um, you know, meditating, of course, um, there are so many ways to do that, whatever, um, you know, it kind of makes sense to you. You know, I'm a person that I have, uh, ADHD and my mind just works in a different way. Um, than I guess most or some or whatever. And, um, just, trying to sit there and empty my mind is, um, kind of a torture. Uh, although it's gotten better as I've gotten older. Um, but for me, meditating is almost more like an act of imagination or it's like visualizing the things that I'm thinking about my emotions, um, as you know, things that are coming into, uh, almost like clouds coming near me, right through my psyche and um i see them i notice them and then i let them go they just pass by right and um this kind of meditation i never even knew that was something that people did you know i had to <laughs> do some reading um so i i've had to uh try a lot of different things you know, a lot of breath work helps with meditation for me as well. More emphasized on that than anything else. So, um, you know, it could be so many different things for you. Uh, I also think, you know, although not exactly the same, but contemplation. Um, we don't, we don't talk about contemplation as much. I think, I don't know. I, I don't notice it a lot it, in a lot of the modalities or paradigms of, um, kind of self-help new age and, you know, whatever. Um, but contemplation, I think, 
um, and not ruminating there. Those are different things, but contemplating, um, you know, things like, uh, symbols, right? Archetypes, um, scenarios, uh, that are more abstract than what you're going through. But I, what I like to do is whatever I'm feeling, some of the dynamics, I like to match it to kind of the um, tropes of mythology, of folklore, um, even some fictions and things, and just try to detach myself to some degree from what I'm going through. Look at it through the lens of, um, you know, a reader, a witness, okay, and look at how these tropes are not unlike the things I'm going through in my life because we do. We live out a lot of collective um, uh, stories, right? Uh, we live out these scenarios that are put into mythology that are, um, you know, different kinds of, um, what is the word? I can't think of the word, but, uh, you know, the, they're, they are... They are archetypal problems or, you know, situations for a reason because they are, they're cliched to humanity. They are things that happen to most or all people. They maybe just look a little different from person to person, but these are, you know, um, the ordeals that we all live out. And sometimes we live them out over and over and over again because we have to learn something from them. I don't know. Maybe that's just our karma. I don't know. Um, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but yes, contemplating, I think, is something um, that can be very helpful. But, you know, we have to be careful not to ruminate. I'm really good at ruminating, by the way. That's like, I could go to the Olympics <laughs> for ruminating. Um, I'm that good at it. Okay, so let's see. We have a little bird. We actually have two little birds, and we have another illuminating candle. So I think, really, um, we do have some deep messaging coming through. And I think this is really important to doing that work. I also think that, quite literally, we have the person looking at the sky with their arm extended. I think that maybe you could go out and look at the sky for a little while do that every day for a couple of weeks even if it's just for a few minutes um you know it doesn't have to be the night sky don't go looking at the sun though i never said that um but go go and look go and look up how often do we just forget to even look at the sky um, you know, where I live, this, we, it's very wide open. So I see the sky a lot. Um, and I'm amazed. I never looked at the sky as much when I lived in the city. And, um, I see all kinds of stuff going on. Um, I've learned so much about the birds. Um, so many things about clouds <laughs> that I never knew. Um, my husband even was studying clouds and, and um, different kinds of clouds and stuff. And so we would talk about that a bit. But, um, you know, I've seen so many colors I never even saw before. I understand the weather pa weather patterns a lot more. Um, a lot of interesting stuff going on at night in the sky. Um, I just saw the um, Starlink uh, line of um, satellites not that long ago, a couple weeks ago. And so... You know, there's so much going on. And it is a really good friend that will always listen. You know, that sky, it will. It will listen. Okay, so we're going to do the Dreamer's Deck. And this is 40 Affirmations for Pursuing Your Dreams. And this is from the I Know Collection. <clears throat> okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and stop where it feels right and <coughs> excuse me and see how this has to do with our reading it says i know that i am the only one who determines what is and what isn't right for me 
I am the final say. Yeah, I like that. That's something, you know, that is something we have to learn. Um, because, and you know what, as a, as a parent, I really, it's hard because of time management and also just trying to get things, you know, done. Um, really finding the language to talk to my child where she feels empowered to make her own decisions. Um, because... Going into adulthood and feeling like anybody else has input about who you are, what you know, what you identify as or with, or um, you know, whatever your ever-changing um, identity, personality, uh, you know, interests, whatever the things that you do, the things that you want to do, the things you don't want to, all of these things, and you go into life as an adult thinking that anybody else has a say in that it's a lot of conditioning it takes so much to undo um that deep conditioning and so i think about this a lot you know and there's a lot in the there's a lot in this uh, movement towards autonomy for young children right and i think it's so important and um so you know, something that, uh, we should, and I want to, I want to say it again because, you know, I think it's really, I know, <laughs> I know that I am the only one who determines what is and isn't right for me. I am the final say, period. Gosh, that is a powerful energy. All right, I want to go ahead and say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to spend this time with you and to bring these messages for you. Okay, and so if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And the algorithm, um, you know, really decides like how far out these videos go. Um, if they get recommended to people and so on. Uh, so things like liking the video, uh, watching the readings from the beginning to the end, and sharing them on other social media platforms really helps boost that for the algorithm. And um, if you're interested in supporting the channel, these are like the best ways to do it. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And if you uh, want to leave a comment, please do. I read all of them. Uh, it, I mean, they are very important. <laughs> they are so important to me um, because I love hearing about you all. I love feeling your energies. I've gotten to know some of you pretty well. And um, I, I absolutely adore you all. <laughs> I really do. And, um, and yeah, so... Uh, Again, I'm going to say thank you. I will talk to you in a few days, Scorpio. And um, I hope you have a beautiful week or weekend or whatever is coming up next after you've watched this. And I love you. Bye-bye.